Can you use the brand new 12.9 inch M1 iPad Pro as your only video editing computer? Let's find out. What's up everyone? I'm the Everyday Dad and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. So I love making these videos. Uh, I like finding out if we can use all sorts of tech as like your only video editing computer. And I guess to answer that question, obviously, yes. We've been making this series of videos about the iPad Pro since 2018 and each one of those iterations has been able to work. So will it work? Yes, but let's see how this new model works. Is it faster? Is it really worth spending that extra money when you could get a 2020 or 2018 as a video editing computer previously? So let's find out. Let's pop this over here. Now, normally what I do is I have an external device recording the screen on this and we go that way. However, this time, since the monitor is really the main attraction of this whole iPad with the mini LED super high contrast rate, we're just gonna record the screen itself you can see here, so you can actually see what the screen looks like. Now I did already pair the Magic Keyboard and Magic Mouse. Now the first thing we're gonna do, video editing is in three parts, right? There's the processing, the editing, and then the rendering. So the first part of processing is getting the files into the iPad itself. Now to save us all some time, I've already transferred all of the files we're gonna need from the unboxing of this iPad, but I wanna show you how it would actually work. So you can get the little SD card dongle, you plug it in, we can go over to what we've got. It's called iMac editing. That's kind of embarrassing. I was too lazy to relabel the folder, so you kind of get to see into my thing here. So one of the things that will really be frustrating if you are going to use an iPad as your main computer is, as we're copying, you can see that, there's no transfer bar. All you see is this little scroll wheel. This could mean any number of things. It could mean, hey, everything's going fine. It could mean, hey, you've actually crashed, but you don't know yet. It's just kind of a pain in the butt. So one of the things you'll have to understand is your workflow, you'll have to deal with this. Okay, now we already have all of the files in here. So the program I'm gonna use for this is called LumaFusion. It is an app that you have to buy. LumaFusion is not sponsoring this video, but I just like using it. Um, you can use iMovie for free, and it's also a very powerful test. Video editing, M1 iPad. Man, I love, love using the uh, the Magic Keyboard and Magic Mouse with you. Ever since the iPads have allowed this to happen, it's just such a good device. Okay, so what we'll do is we will take, so I've got the unboxing, we'll do the top down and we'll do the A roll. We'll just do the processing, we'll edit the video itself, and we will then do like what we normally do. We'll cut up the intro, then we'll do our rendering test. So we've got here, I like that all of the gestures between the Macs and the iPad continues to work. So let's see here, let's zoom this out a little bit. Using the touch functionality on this does make editing a little bit easier because you can be a little faster with your hands than you may be able to be with like a mouse and a keyboard. So I do like that. And it's really quick too. Okay, got the audio synced up. You can see the two waveforms right there. Synced up, let's cut this. Okay, deleted. All right, everything should be lined up. Now the thing is, because of these tracks, let's pop out the audio. We will mute that. So let's listen in, let's, there we go. The packaging protects it, right? Man, the speakers on this are really good too. Okay, so let's get, we've got the files all lined up. I haven't seen anything slow down. And these are the same files that we talked about with the iMac video editing. So these are two, 4K 10-bit H.265 files from my Lumix S5, which is tough, tough codecs to handle. I mean, I know I say that a lot, but if you go back even like a year ago to previous computers, I never shot an H.265 because of how rough they were to work. But right here, I'm not seeing any problems. One. Look at that. Do you see anything slowing down? Small monitor if you have... Nothing slowed down. Everything's just working super seamlessly, which I really really like okay we've talked let's get to the coloring so you can actually on LumaFusion um, do some color grading and color editing on your own so let's see here I have one of the things that I would recommend if you're gonna do this do an original you always have to add that to your color grading and that gives you access to like contrast saturation all of the normal video editing things um, but you can also add in LUTs of your own I'm using the nicest LUT that Lumix makes for their cameras so we've got the LUT on there, and then let's add just a little bit. We'll go back to this original. We'll add a little more contrast, a little more saturation, and I think that looks pretty darn good. So let's go over here to the actual orientation, and we will change this around to 180, so it looks more like what you all are used to seeing. 
Okay, maybe crop it in just a little bit, not too much. Crop it in just a little bit. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, the top is processed. I love how easy that was, dang. This is the thing that's nice about using iPads is iPads are unreasonably powerful. The file system, you do have to kind of work around the processing in the file system, but the, the power itself is crazy fast. Okay, we got the top one done. Let's now edit the main A roll itself. So let's go over to colors. We'll again add original. We'll go over to the nicest. Now, one of the things that I do not like about LumaFusion, and I have seen that they may be adding this in the future, is you don't get access to scopes, so like a waveform or a vector scope. I normally do my editing off of a waveform to kind of prove where all of the luminance values are. You don't get that here, so you kind of have to eyeball it. One of the nice things about this super high contrast display, the mini LED display, is it's pretty accurate. So if you can get your colors dialed in on this thing. There we go, right about there. Just a scooch of saturation. If you can get your colors dialed in on this thing, it will be dialed in. So there we go, we've color edited. We color processed all the files. Okay, looking pretty good. Let's do the audio really quick. Sounds pretty good. So we drop down. Now you don't get access to all of the mixers that I've been able to see so far, but with these things, you can add different kinds of filters, distortions, high pass, low pass. You can also kind of configure it yourself a little bit. Um, but I don't want to do any of that. I just wanted to lower the uh, the noise just a bit. Okay, so it looks like we've got everything ready to go. So the files are totally processed. Let's get towards the actual editing. So let's edit the intro, see what we got here. Come over here. Apple just I like having the intro totally um, of the A-roll, so we'll get rid of that. Here we go. Apple just, Apple just Oops, screwed up. Gary here uh, messes up quite a bit when it comes to these. You might be surprised to know. Apple just released the brand new M1 iPad Pro. So what comes in the box and is it any good? Let's find out. Okay, so we got, we want to cut here. Then we want to cut here. Cause I like that it's like snappier that way. So like, Packaging protects it, right? What's up, everyone? there we go, I'm ready, dad. And if I can figure it out, you, you can figure it. Okay, so where's the U? You can okay, so there's the U. So okay, can figure it out. Okay, so this one we do need to add. So let's go back in here. Whoops, wrong, right here. Zoom in a little bit, bring it down. Boom, okay. You can figure it out. There we go. I'm a pretty big fan. Okay, but like right there, I wanted to point to the iPad itself. Let's come over here, bring you back over. This. I'm a pretty big fan of iPads. There we You've go. You've seen me here on the channel all of the time. And UPS, not five. Not, not I mean, five they literally had just ago. dropped it off. Just dropped this off. Then. Okay, so we're looking up. I like uh, showing that. So, boom. We did cut the intro. This is kind of a short intro, so we'll see here. Seconds ago, just dropped this off. And I'm incredibly. And I'm incredibly. Ooh, we, we messed up right there. Here we go. Just dropped this off. And I'm. One of the things that I really like about LumaFusion is you see all of the waveforms right here, and that's how I do most of my video editing, is off of the audio waveform. I don't actually edit, like, I rarely, once you process the files, you don't really need to look at what you're doing, you just need to be able to hear it. Man, the speakers on this iPad are ridiculously good. I love that. Dang. Okay, well, we won't, we already cut the intro, we won't waste all of your time here, um, but so far, I'm pretty impressed. There's been no slowdowns. There's been no hiccups. Everything's worked perfectly well. The best part is this display though. I'm telling you, this display for color editing, having a display this accurate and this just crisp is really gonna help you dial this in. I feel like we've done a pretty good job color grading this and I don't have access to a waveform. And that's normally the only way. I normally do not do my color grading without a waveform. So kudos to Apple for having a display that's so good for that. Okay, we won't belabor the point. Let's get to the render test because that's pretty important too. So let's go out to five minutes. Here we go, five minutes. Okay, let's delete this. We've got a five minute clip, but let's... Okay, we will delete this one. Come over here, delete this one, just to kind of keep the processor up on its toes. Zoom out a bit. So there is our total five minute clip with color grading, audio processing, two layers of 4K 10 bit H.265, which makes a computer want to cry. So let's get to the, we will export it to movie. 
we'll just do um, the files. Yep, we'll keep it in 4K. Frame rate 30 frames per second or 29.97, which is the real frame rate to use. Quality 75 megabits per second, which is, I mean, that's more than like YouTube will take. And that's more than I think I normally do with, uh, I think Final Cut actually pops out at 50. So we'll do 50 just to keep it fair. We are using, you can see, I'm not, I'm not fooling you. We are actually using H.265, but we are going to export it to .mp4 just because that's pretty nice. Okay, it will end up being a 1.43 gigabyte file. So let's get our handy dandy timer. We're ready to go. Can you see it right there? So three two, one, go. Okay, so here you go. Man, look how fast that is going. So this is showing how much of the movie it's written at any given time. And you can already see that we're about double real time. That's going crazy fast. But I won't again, I won't make you sit here and wait for this. We'll pause and we'll come back in just a second when this is about done. So, okay, and we're back. You can see we're just about to finish up. As soon as it's done, we'll hit stop and boom. So it took two minutes and 54 seconds to render a five minute video file of 4K 10 bit HEVC. That's, that's pretty impressive. That's about as fast as the iMac that we did the video editing test on last week. That is very impressive for a tablet, but I mean, it's not that much faster than the 2020. So maybe we'll do some more in-depth testing to see which one's faster, whether the 2020 is faster or the new M1 option is faster. The A12Z processor is pretty darn good and it was also an eight core processor and you need more cores for video editing. It ends up helping out a little bit, but could you use this as your only video editing computer? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I think what really wins on the iPad is the display. The display is the nicest display that I've ever edited on period. It's nicer than my actual monitor that I use. So this will very much help you with your color grading, will help you getting everything dialed in. You'll have to deal with the wonkiness of the file system on the iPad, but you just saw that we did it with the toughest footage possible. It rendered fast, it edited super easy. Um, and is it really, is it hot? I mean, I don't even feel that this thing is warm right now, which is impressive. Even my MacBook Air, when I do rendering on that, it will warm up a little bit and this does not feel all that warm at all. So yes, you could use this as your only video editing computer. And if you like this video and you are now a little bit more interested in buying the M1 iPad Pro 12.9 inch, well, here you go. Here's my video where you can see about the unboxing and all the cool stuff that comes with it. You can click right here. Click, 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 click. Thanks for watching.